Dear Brothers and Sisters in Christ This video will be on the 20th century wonder-working Russian bishop, St. John Maximovich, of Shanghai and San Francisco. It will discuss highlights from his life, virtues, and miracles. Please watch, comment, like, share, click on the bell for updates, subscribe, and first and foremost, enjoy. St. John Maximovich was a great wonder-worker bishop, in the Russian Church, in the 20th century. He was a world-class ascetic, as far as fasting and prayer. He was a true shepherd and an excellent bishop, who took care of his flock, however scattered and divided they were. He was a bishop first in Shanghai, China, where he was able to rescue his flock to the U.S. Then he became a bishop in Western Europe. Then finally in San Francisco. He was given the gift of healing the sick, clairvoyance, prophecy, and illumination. By some accounts, one can conclude that he may have had even the gift of agility, which means teleporting to far places instantaneously. Yet the most important gift of all, was to prepare people for death at the last minutes, like the Lord did with the repentant thief on the cross. He was there with the sick and dying, many of whom were absolute strangers to him and he went to them uninvited. Many of those sick didn't know that they were dying soon after the visit. He accepted their confession, and gave them communion, to prepare them to the trip to heaven. He was an avid reader of the lives of the saints, reviving the biographies and memory of Western pre-schism saints, unknown to Eastern Orthodoxy. His Life St. John Maximovich, was born in southern Russia, in the village of Adamovka, in June 4, 1896, and was given the name Michael. He joined the Imperial School of Law, then fled with his family to Belgrade during the Soviet Civil War, where he joined the Belgrade Seminary, and was tonsured a reader. He was tonsured a monk, then ordained a priest in 1926. He was given the name John, as his distant relative St. John Maximovich of Tobolsk. Between 1929 and 1934, Father John taught in the Batol Theological Seminary, where people saw his utmost fatherly care for his students, and the news of his virtues and extreme asceticism started to be known to people. He was ordained a bishop on May 28, 1934, and was sent to Shanghai to assist Metropolitan Dmitry of the Far East, who praised him saying, as quote, a miracle of ascetic firmness and strictness in our time of total spiritual enfeeblement. End of quote. There, he united the scattered flock of various jurisdictions, Greeks, Russians, and others for example, helped the poor, and created an orphanage. Not only did he help Orthodox orphans, but he gathered Chinese orphans, numbering 1,500 from the slums as well. In Shanghai, Vladika John, manifested the gifts of the Holy Spirit, of healing the sick, clairvoyance and prophecy. After the Communists took over China, he helped his flock escape first to the Philippines, where he subdued the weather, and kept away the seasonal typhoons from his refugee camp for many months. Then, he was able to secure for them residence in the U.S. He was then assigned a bishopric in France, and became one of the leading hierarchs in the Russian Church. News of his voluntary poverty, asceticism, compassion for the dying, and miracles, were known to Western Catholics. That made a Catholic priest declared to his congregation, that St. John the Barefoot was a saint. He finally was assigned the bishopric of San Francisco, in the U.S., in 1962. There, he completed the construction of the current Holy Virgin Mary Cathedral, and tried earnestly to reconcile two parties in the congregation, that were at war with each other. Despite restoring relative peace, some accused him of concealing financial corruption and sued him. He was exonerated but was heartbroken. His Virtues 
his asceticism. During his years as a religious teacher, Vladi Kajan, was well on his way on the arduous journey of asceticism, of long prayers, and extreme fasts. He slept later than everyone else, and went around in the dorms covering the sleepers again, if their sheets fell off while asleep. Then he would be praying on his knees most of the night, until he can't but succumb to the natural fatigue of this spiritual struggle, stealing a couple of hours near dawn. He ate only once at 11 p.m. during fasts, and didn't eat at all during the first and last weeks of Lent. This harsh lifestyle continued until the day he died, when he prayed for three hours at the altar to prepare for his journey to heaven, then died peacefully shortly after. His Humility Vladi Kajan, was truly a humble person, not trying to show off his struggles, nor being affected by admiration from people around him. He met one of his old acquaintances in one city, telling her that he visited that city, as they wanted to make someone named John a bishop. The next day he met her saying, They want to make me, a bishop. He never thought of himself as an exemplary Christian, one that was worthy or prepared for the bishopric. His daring courage. His courage and charity, were evident in China. He didn't care how dangerous the situation was, when walking at night in dark alleys, to gather orphans from the slums, and performing works of charity. He was fearless against drunkards, gangsters, and other shady characters, and wasn't bothered by the Japanese curfew. How can he be afraid, if there were many desperate cases in need of God's compassion? God, who entrusted this work to Vladi Kajan, and overshadowed him with his providence. Vladika's faith was unshaken and daring in another instance. A certain Mrs. Menshikova, was bitten by a mad dog, but didn't take the injections to treat this highly contagious disease. Vladika came to give her communion. That's when she started to have the fits and symptoms of this disease, and started vomiting the Eucharist. Honoring the body of the Son of God, he took him from her mouth and ate him. Nothing will happen, he said, calming the fears of people around him of the terribly contagious disease. God's providence and the gift of prophecy proved him right. His courage was also evident in upholding orthodoxy, and not bowing to persecution. When several bishops in Russia got scared of the communists, and started playing the hypocrites with the Soviets, St. John remained steadfast in the faith, and never accepted such shameful compromise. This disastrous compromise, caused a schism, tarnished the image of the church, and confused the faithful. His Poverty His intentional poverty was evident to all. From his abode, which was a room with very little furniture, even in the prosperous diocese in San Francisco, to the way he dressed. It was said that his embarrassed congregants complained about him, and his superiors made him buy a new pair of shoes to have it readily available. Not knowing what that meant, he put the shoes under his arm whenever he went, but still used his old sandals. His reverence inducing demeanor. His demeanor instilled reverence in those who saw him, considering him a pious man of God. In the US, our saint was late for a Senate meeting, to try to pass the legislation to accept Russian refugees fleeing communist China. The minute he stepped in, senators naturally stood up to him. The Holy Spirit compelled them to do so, in order to honor the saint. Sometimes his demeanor spoke volumes. Other pastors may not have that reverence, with their demeanor having no real effect in disciplining and chastisement. Not so with Vladi Kajan. One Halloween night, several parishioners in San Francisco skipped church, and started a dance party. After services were over, St. John went to the ball. His figure, and deliberate slow walking, stopped the music going one deliberate step after the next, around the hall, dumbfounded the parishioners, and put them to shame, without uttering even one word. His love of children. 
Chinese families, during that time, were big. And they used to get rid of newborns in the trash. So as not to have another mouth to feed. Vladika's love for God and his helpless children made him go to the slums to gather those babies. His wisdom made him take a large bottle of liquor with him on one of his daily rounds. And it turned out he needed it. He was met, one night, by an angry drunkard near one dumpster in an alley. He motioned to that drunkard, then he needed to see what's in the dumpster, giving him that bottle in return. Using this wise technique, Vladika was able to rescue one more child. Another miracle Vladika worked, was healing the psychological trauma of one child, who saw his family killed, and cut to pieces in front of him. He became mute, and very aggressive, towards people around him. Vladika's daughters were afraid, that this boy will harm the children, under their care, in their orphanage. On knowing his story, Vladika had compassion, and spoke with the strength of the Holy Spirit, saying, I am your dad. The boy immediately started crying, and letting out his pent-up, traumatized feelings. The Holy Spirit's words, spoken with much conviction, started the healing process of this child, with the most unfortunate past. The Provider of Food With the continuous increase of number of children in the orphanage, food was starting to be scarce, with many children not having enough, and with the workers skipping meals to feed them. One of Vladika's children, yelled at him on top of her lungs, that she had had it with Vladika, and how he kept adding to the number of children. He looked at her with sadness, saying, what do you want me to do? Well at least give us even some oats to feed them, just a little. She yelled at him. That night, Vladika was heard crying out to the Lord loudly, and prostrating, all night long, depriving some people of their sleep. The next day the miracle happened. An English salesman knocked on their door, saying, Hi, in my company, it turned out that we ordered too much oats. I know you have an orphanage. Would you like some? You can have all of it. On hearing this, Vladika's daughter, who had previously screamed at him the previous night, felt such remorse, that she felt that she was ready to kiss his feet. How could she doubt God's providence and care, with Vladika, her father, is by her side? His Gifts and Miracles his healing in Shanghai. Vladika, prayed with the faithful in the cathedral, twice a day as much as possible. Once, Vladika's leg was swollen, and fearing gangrene, doctors asked him to go to the hospital, and asked his parishioners to threaten to take the very resistant saint, to the hospital by force, until he gave in, that is. By six o'clock, Vladika came on foot limping to church, so as not to miss serving at the altar the feast of the exaltation of the cross. Swelling went away, very soon after. The Gift of Prophecy He also could foretell people's death. In Shanghai, Vladika was asked to give communion to a dying man, in a Russian hospital. So, he went to the hospital. But instead of going to the dying man, he went to a healthy soon-to-be-discharged patient, who was joyously playing the harmonica. I want to give you communion right now. He said. The person confessed, and took communion, much to the astonishment of everyone. Vladika knew that this person would die that very night, and that the seriously sick patient would live for many years afterwards. The Gift of Clairvoyance a woman named Lydia Liu wrote to Vladika during his first visit to Hong Kong, asking him about a personal matter, and making some petitions of him. He never wrote back. During his second and last visit to Hong Kong, Lydia was among the crowds thronging to take his blessings. When she, a complete stranger, approached, he told her, It is you, who wrote me the letter. Another account of Vladika's clairvoyance was also evident in San Francisco. Anahata Riva, related that her sister Ksenia, 
Yar Foy, who lived in Los Angeles, suffered a painful hand. No doctor cured, and no home remedies helped. So, she wrote Vladika a letter, and he healed her sister. Years later, when the sister visited the cathedral in San Francisco, she approached Vladika to kiss the cross in his hand. On seeing her, which was his first time, he asked her, How is your hand? Another incident, that proves Vladika's clairvoyance and power to heal, was recounted by Mrs. L. Lou. Her husband was involved in a very bad accident. She was afraid to approach Vladika, due to his many troubles and responsibilities that kept him busy, despite the fact that she knew he would heal him. After two days, and suddenly and unannounced, Vladika showed up at their door, and stayed for five minutes. That visit increased Mrs. Lee's faith, and gradually healed her husband. What's amazing, is the fact that, at that time our saint was on his way to the airport, when suddenly, Vladika, asked his driver to turn around to visit Mrs. Lou. He silenced the objections of the people around him that he will miss the plane, as he never did, by asking, Can you take the life of a man upon yourself? Miracles of Healing VD recounts, that Vladika could visit anyone, anytime, without being asked. The Lord directed him where to go and who to visit, so they let him in, without questioning in the French hospitals. VD's brother had a large fracture in the skull, due to a head wound, that swelled his eyes, and made them bloody. Vladika, who did not know the brother, went to him in the hospital, prayed for him, gave him communion, and healed him, to the astonishment of the doctors. Subduing of Nature one more gift Vladika had, was the subduing of nature. After communism ascended into power in China, most Russian refugees, around 5,000 in all, had to relocate to an international refugee camp in the island of Tubabauf, in the Philippines. This island was in the path of the frequent seasonal typhoons. But locals found out, why they were spared, and attributed it to our saints' prayers. During the two-year and three-month period the camp was on that island. Only one typhoon came close to it, but it changed course and bypassed the island. After the Russian refugees left, seasonal typhoons started battering the island once again. The Gift of Illumination Beside prophecy and clairvoyance, Vladika had the gift of illumination. It happened at one instance during a sermon that a radiant foot-wide light, surrounded him for a long time, with many parishioners seeing it. But a second time, God helped restore faith to a desperate parishioner, who lost it due to the trials and suffering in her life. In that, she saw a beautiful radiant light, descend into the chalice at the time of transubstantiation. The Possible Gift of Agility in France Vladika took lessons, from a voice teacher, Anna Petrovna Lashnikova, back in Shanghai to improve his pronunciation, due to having a speech impediment. Afterwards, during the war, she was gravely wounded, and was cared for, in a French hospital. Feeling the despair of death, she wanted people to call Vladika, who was also in France, to give her communion. That was impossible due to wartime restrictions. She kept calling upon Vladika. Around 11 p.m., he appeared to her in her ward, and after he had prayed and had given her communion, she calmed down and slept, and felt cured the next morning. To prove everyone's doubt false, knowing the hospital was on lockdown the night before, he left a material evidence of his blessed visit. Anna Petrovna found a $20 bill under her pillow, the same amount he paid her for his lessons, much to her surprise. His repose and final resting place. He knew the place, time, and date of his death in advance, and announced to people, that it would take place on July 2, 1966, in Seattle, and not in San Francisco. After his death, many of his children saw him in dreams and visions, radiating light, and indicating that he was happy. Despite the high humidity, that corroded the cross, covered the vestments with mold, and disintegrated the Bible over his body. 
Vladika's unembalmed body was found and corrupt, and now occupies a shrine in the Russian Orthodox Cathedral in San Francisco. He was canonized in the Russian Church on July 2, 1994, in a celebration of hundreds of clergy and thousands of laymen from around the world. His feast is celebrated on the Saturday nearest to July 2. He continues to work miracles to this day, among which is the following. Vladika John's compassion, expressed itself, when he appeared to give counsel and encouragement without being sought. Case in point, one woman named Kim in Vietnam, who was introduced to the faith by an Orthodox believer named Paul. She told him, that she dreamed of a monk who gave her instructions. When Paul received religious literature about Vladika, she was astonished, as she recognized her nightly visitor to be our beloved saint. Being the loving and caring father he was, he intervened and helped, without being asked. Vladika's visions at night gave her the final push, and she was baptized, in the Orthodox faith. Brothers and sisters, this video concludes the biography of St. John Maximovich. The next video, which will contain miracles of St. John after his death, won't be my next immediate video, but I will get back to St. John, in the near future. As always, please watch, comment, like, share, click on the bell for updates, subscribe, and first and foremost, enjoy. Glory be to our God forever. Amen.